on the news over 12 persons killed as gunmen attack repentant bandits in Katsina State. Again, police secure unconditional release of 32 kidnapped victims in Vipara State. And Okorocha formally declares for presidency. Well, it's good to have you join us on News Now. I am Mary Anu. Over 12 persons were killed after a group of gunmen attacked repentant bandits in Ileila village, Safana Luku government area of Katsina state. Residents who fled the village to the neighboring communities, including Dutsima and Kankara, told reporters on Monday that the gunmen attacked them in the early hours of Friday. According to the residents, the gunmen came on a mission to attack a repentant bandit, popularly known as Mani Towa, who was said to be protecting the community. And police in Zamfara state have again secured the unconditional release of 32 kidnapped victims in the state. The victims, mostly in the genes of Niger and Kaduna states, were rescued in Densadol forest over two months in captivity. The victims were mostly men with a few nursing mothers, children and the aged. This is the fourth time in one month police in Zamfara is securing the release of kidnapped victims. A notorious bandit leader, Bello Toji, had earlier this month volunteered Contrary, released 68 of his victims after about two months in captivity. And former governor of Imo State and senator representing Imo West, Senator Rochas Okorocha, has officially declared his intention to contest the 2023 presidency. Rochas made this announcement at a world press conference in Abuja on Monday. The Imo State lawmaker said if elected, his priority would be to reunite Nigeria and believes he has the capacity to guide the country through the path of economic growth and prosperity. The former Imo State governor said he is seeking to establish a new Nigeria where issues of poverty and security will be addressed. The Nigerian Senate says there are indications that the Finance Act of 2021 may be amended anytime soon. This comes after the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, Colonel Ahmed Ali, informed the Senate Committee on Finance that the Customs is no longer a revenue-generating agency due to the amendment of some sections of the Finance Act. Ali said the passage of Section 68 of the Federal Inland Revenue Service Act has now taken precedence over any other law in terms of administration, collection and levies force relegating the customs to the background. Subject to subsection 1 and notwithstanding any other law imposing taxes or levies in Nigeria, the service shall be the primary agency of the federal government of Nigeria responsible for the administration, assessment, collection, accounting, enforcement of taxes and levies due to the federation and the federal government or any of its agencies except as may be authorized by a minister responsible for finance or regulation as approved by the National Assembly. It shall be an offense for any person to carry out or authorize any, any other to carry out the function of administering, assessment, collection, accounting, or enforcement of taxes and levies due to the Federation and the Federal Government of Nigeria, except as may be provided under this Act. The conclusion is that this act is confusing. And if stakeholders decide to take leverage of this, they can decide to say, we are not supposed to collect duties and levies. And therefore, they only pay to FRS. And that would bring a complete, total chaos in this country. In their submissions, the Senate President Ahmed Lawan and the Chairman Senate Committee on Finance Solomon Adeola revealed that the recently passed Finance Act is open for amendment. So I, we, we take this issue very seriously and I'm sure the, the Committee on Finance with the Ministry, with you, will look at this uh, Finance Act where it is established beyond any reasonable doubt that there is need for us to amend. We will do so expeditiously. Probably that will be the fastest amendment that we will have to make because 
time is of essence. We wanted to collect money for January. What necessitated that singular action was as a result of the issues between the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission and the Federal Inland Revenue Service. There was clashes. So the only way that we can be more explicit is through that Finance Act concerning the assessment, accounting, of, because when you see Revenue Mobilization Commission as part of their activity, they are going to agencies of the government, even to outside to audit their account and asking that they should bring money. It is not part of the law that established Revenue Mobilization Commission. The only government agency saddled with this responsibility is the Federal Inland Revenue Service. So that was what that law tends to address. But if you believe it has captured you along the line because of the nature of your job, as the Senate President has said, we are ready to look into it and amend accordingly. The School of Politics, Policy and Governance have held its first convocation for the class of 2021 at the International Conference Center, Abuja. Founded in 2021, the former Minister of Education, Obiagili Ezekwesili, said the school aims to train value-based and disruptive thinking political class who are equipped with knowledge and skills to solve complex problems of development. Our correspondent, Fola Shadi Ogurinde, tells us more in this next report. One after the other, the pioneer class of the School of Politics, Policy and Governance, SPPG, came up to the podium to receive their certificate. Tag the unconventional class. These group of young Nigerians have been trained on political leadership with the aim of transforming politics in Africa. The keynote speaker at the event and governor-elect of Anambra State, Chukuma Suludu, said fixing politics in Nigeria requires new developmental organizations and a new set of disruptive thinkers. He advised the graduating student to resist the law of corruption that had become a part of the Nigerian culture. For me, there is almost a sense of nostalgia recalling the mission and the accomplishments of our founding fathers especially as we contemplate the world without oil in Nigeria. Much of the existing social order in Nigeria today is founded on competition for and distribution of rents. Of rents. Oil and the easy money that came with it destroyed the social fabric and the elite created new institutions and political structures to maximize their gains. As the news, as the news tightened globally on other rentiers through criminal enterprises such as drug trafficking or internet scamming, many of the barons flocked into politics as the next easy alternative. Politics has therefore become big business. Appointment or election into public office is seen largely as an opportunity to quote it rather than a call to selfless service. Founder of SPPG, Obiageli Ezekwesili, said the purpose of the school is to radically transform the quality of political and public leadership in Nigeria and Africa. She also lamented the way politics in Africa was run, saying it had slanted the society and hampered its growth and development. You should not expect any radical change in the fortunes of the continent of Africa until Africa fixes its politics. The politics of Africa today does not respect cost to the individual. It disdains cost to the individual. It only promotes benefit to the individual that is in the public space. The leader does not live to enjoy because absolutely nothing exists in the form of a life of debauchery in leadership. Leadership is about service. On a part, the pioneer dean of SPPG, Amino Salihu, said despite the challenges the students faced as a pioneer class, they are prepared to launch their positive disruptive powers. Respect the earth. It's the only home we have got. Travel the world any legitimate way you can, via Zoom, via Bing, or with your own two legs. Be global, but keep rooted locally, for what are we without roots that ground us and remind us of who we are and what matters. Above all, 
Remember those Julio Starch words. Be bold. Be optimistic. Be involved. The graduating set known as the hashtag SPPG Partner Class 2021 were trained on an eight-month world-class multidisciplinary curriculum. The school has a distinguished local, African and international 94-member faculty made up of academics, experts and other professionals. For Lashade Ogurinde, TV360 News. Kogi State Governor Yahaya Bello has urged Nigerians to shun all forms of religious sentiments and leave as one for the peace and growth of Nigeria. The governor who made the call during a visit by a delegation from the Northern State Christian Association of Nigeria in Abuja said Kogi State is successful today due to his inclusion of all the religions in the administration of the state. He also said since his ascension to office, the people of Kogi have not experienced a major religious crisis like they have in the past. On his part, Vice Chairman Northern, Northern uh, Christian Association of Nigeria, Very Reverend Father Andrew Dodo, who led the delegation, applauded Governor Bello for his patriotism and religious tolerance, noting that he is a leader Nigeria needs. I am very much aware that I am the youngest governor today in Nigeria. This is my sixth year in the office. I am the last born of the governor's forum. <laughs> can be referred to as Dan Ota. But I had wished that I had a younger brother by this time. And by the grace of God, I hope and I pray fervently that come 2023, we will have younger governors in this country. And of course, produce the youngest president as a case would be. We need leaders today, like you, that do not allow contradictions, religion, ethnicity, between his deeds and his pronouncement. And once you are a man of integrity and you don't allow contradictions to mirror your leadership, then you will be counted one among many. And we have seen in you a detrabalized Nigeria, a great friend of the poor, a man with the fear of God, a peacemaker, a man who is so close to the youth, a lover of the youth whose name stands tall in Nigeria and because he's a young man and he's using that as the process of reaching out to those who belong to his constituency of young people. Well, we'll take a break here, but still to come, African Union ECOWAS suspend Burkina Faso over cool. Well, details of the story and more right after this break. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait, do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, 
Yeah, and it's true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Glad to have you back as a recap of some of our top stories tonight. Police in Zamfara have again secured the unconditional release of 32 kidnapped victims in the state. The victims, in whom are mostly indigenous of Niger and Kaduna states, were rescued in Dansadal Forest after two months in captivity. This is the fourth time in one month police in Zamfara is securing the release of kidnapped victims. We also told you the former Imo state governor and senator representing Imo West District, Rocha Sokoracha, has officially declared his intention to run for the presidency in 2023. The former Imo state governor said he is seeking to establish a new Nigeria where issues of poverty and security will be addressed. Well, in case you miss any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on wwwtv 360 com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we're at TV360 Online. And now to COVID-19 stories and updates with no fatalities reported. Nigeria on Sunday recorded 22 additional coronavirus infections across four states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. The latest statistics released by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, on Sunday indicates a significant decrease in the figure of newly confirmed cases. With no data from Lagos State, the epicenter of the disease, the breakdown of data revealed that Oshun State topped the infection chart with nine cases while the FCT and Delta locked six and four cases respectively. The latest data shows that the new cases have increased Nigeria's infection toll to 253,023 while the fatality toll still stands at 3,135. And Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on Monday revealed that he had tested positive for COVID-19. The 50-year-old politician also revealed that he would continue to work remotely while following the health guidelines that have been made available in the country. The Prime Minister also encouraged citizens to get their COVID-19 vaccines and booster shots. There has been a rising call for Canadian citizens and indeed citizens of affected countries to get their COVID-19 vaccines and booster shots. Well, we'll take a break here and return with business updates. Opinions are free, facts are sacred, but truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues.
Welcome back. Well, up next is business news and stock market review with Abisola Adebayo. Over to you, Abisola. Thank you very much, Mary. Welcome to Business News. Ahead of the 2022 Austin Trade Show, the Organization of Youth in International Trade and Commerce, in partnership with the Committee of Youth on Mobilization and Sensitization, has held a U.S. Trade Show Summit to showcase the creativity and productivity of Nigerian youth. During the summit in Abuja, stakeholders emphasized that patronizing locally manufactured products would encourage local manufacturers and help Nigeria to achieve security in various sectors, as well as boost the country's economy. Our correspondent Mujisola Matomi tells us more in this next report. Despite being exposed to a market with a population of over 200 million people, the Nigerian manufacturing sector is currently not performing up to expectations. Aside from high cost of production, the high appetites of Nigerians for foreign-made products has also been identified as the reason for the situation. To combat this challenge and draw attention to Made in Nigeria products, non-profit organization, Committee of Youth on Mobilization and Sensitization, decided to collaborate with the Organization of Youth in the International Trade and Commerce to showcase Nigerian made products in the United States of America. We have looked at various loopholes when it comes to standard of goods, quality of goods, value chain supply, sustainability of good supply. And we're saying that we will, through our organization, help Nigeria get ready for international business. On his part, Deputy Director, Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Ilya Yaro, whose agency is also partnering with the initiative, assured that his agency will deploy necessary means towards achieving the initiative's mandate. We have so many of our youth that are doing well in the areas of fashion, in the areas of technology, in the areas of fintech. That is why the council is here. And I'm here to inform you that the council will ever be willing to support the youth in all areas to make sure that the youth are the engine of growth of this nation. Organizers maintain that the show is expected to share with the rest of the world the creatives and productivities of the Nigerian youth, adding that this will help in combating the situation of brain drain in Nigeria. These young people should be given opportunity to be exposed. These young people should be given opportunity to showcase their talents and product in, in other countries. As we heard from one of our consultants, they say the certification agencies in Nigeria is over 50 something, and which other countries? They are just only one. So if you look at by the time you get NAVDAC, you get this. If all this certification can be gotten at very ease, these young people who are into entrepreneurship will be motivated. Now look, Nigerians are not criminals. As a matter of fact, criminality was imported into Nigeria. Let us now export what we have, which is raw intellectual talent. When you go there, maintain who you are sell your products, come and improve on it the more and continue to export. You don't need to disappear into that place. To encourage local production in the country, the federal government last year issued Executive Order No. 5, which made it mandatory for all ministries, departments and agencies to patronize made in Nigeria products without compromising standards. Mojisola Matomi, TV360, Abuja. We'll take a break here and return with a review of the stock market. Nigerian stock market got off to an optimistic start on Monday, adding 0.91% as the earnings season so far marked by broadly improved performance across sectors boosted investors' confidence. The benchmark indicator remains very well within the 46,000 point level, which it crossed last week despite negative sentiments in the market. Meanwhile, the market capitalization added over 200 billion naira to close at 25 trillion naira at the close of trading today. Moving on, RT Briscoe 
for the first time in years landed in the gainers list in the market today and for the record it's leading the counter appreciating by 10 percent it is closely followed by consolidated all mark insurance on the flip side as our, our losers list for today upl and lasaco led the losers counter as they recorded a combined 35 cobalt loss our market sum receives a total volume of 435 million units of shares valued at 3.4 billion naira exchanging hands in 6,482 deals. Well, today is the last trading day for January and so far it has been a profitable month for investors. So let's hope that the new month starting tomorrow will sustain the, cause, the current positive trend. On the foreign scene, that's the FTSE, the Dow Jones and the Nikkei. London's FTSE erased early gains to end flat on Monday as weakness in healthcare and commodity linked shares countered advances in financials. The Dow Jones on the other hand is in the positive territory today in an attempt to end an awful month on a positive note. Japan stocks Nikkei is also closing the month on a positive note as it recorded 1.07% increase. That's all on Stock Market Report. Over to Mary for the rest of the news. Well, thank you for that update, Abisala. And now on the global scene, the African Union has suspended Burkina Faso in response to the January 24 coup that ousted President Rod Kabore. The U.S. 15-member Peace and Security Council announced on Monday that it had voted to suspend Burkina Faso's participation in all AU activities until the effective restoration of constitutional order in the country. The AU's move is coming three days after the economic community of West African state ECOWAS regional bloc suspended Burkina Faso from its ranks and warned of possible sanctions pending the outcome of meetings with the coup makers. The country's junta leaders have since dissolved the government and parliament and also suspended the constitution pledging to re-establish constitutional order within a reasonable time. Well up next is entertainment report on news now. Nigerian skits maker Adebayo Abidemi, popularly known as Isbeyu, has reacted to allegations that he demanded sex from ladies before featuring them in his skits. The popular Instagram comedian became a topic of discussion on Sunday after blogs shared videos and pictures concerning his alleged sexual relations with ladies. However, in a series of videos and screenshots, Isbeyu noted that he blamed himself for everything that was going on as he went on to share screenshots that suggested that the lady behind the accusation was blackmailing him. Comedian A.Y. Macon's wife Mabel has recounted how she suffered three miscarriages, anal bleeding and other medical conditions before the birth of her second child. In a lengthy Instagram post, the new mom shared the pain and trauma she had to endure during her waiting years. Mabel said she hopes her story would serve as an encouragement to anyone who might also be going through similar experience out there. A.Y. and Mabel have been married since 2008 and welcomed their second child 13 years after. And that is all that we have for you on the entertainment segment of News Now. And now in sports, Senegal overcame Equatorial Guinea 3-1 in the quarterfinal encounter of the Africa Cup of Nations African Tournament in Yaoundé on Sunday night. Sadio Mane supplied two assists as Senegal scored two or more goals in consecutive African games after finishing the group stage with only one goal from the penalty sport. Egypt also sent Morocco out of the tournament with a 2-1 win after extra time. Senegal will now face Burkina Faso in the semi-final on Wednesday while the Faris of Egypt will face Cameroon in the semi-final. Well, that's the size of our bulletin at this time. We well, thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu. Bye for now.